Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming out today. My name is Laura Bidolf, and I work for the Center for Ecotechnology doing community outreach and educating people in their local communities about what they can do to conserve energy within their homes. So I'm excited to see everyone out and uh, interested in our topic. And our topic for today is alternatives to replacement windows. And this is an introduction to what's going on with your windows um, and what you could do to possibly make them better. And uh, I got my start in efficiency with CET as a home energy specialist. So I used to go out and do the assessments that are provided through the Mass Save program. And I used to always ask when I got to people's houses, why is it that you decided to get an assessment today? And probably about 90 to 95% of the time, people would say, oh, well, you know, we, we're wondering if we might need new windows. That was a very, very common reason. And a lot of times, the person who was there, you know, was, you know, the spouse who was hoping that I would say that they did, in fact, need new windows and that they would have proof to give to their spouse that, yes, we need new windows. We had an expert that came out and looked at them. These windows are terrible. We need new windows. Well, the fact of the matter is that replacement windows take a really long time to pay themselves off. And if you've investigated the cost of replacement windows, you might have already figured this out for yourself. But in general, through energy savings, they take 35 to 99 years to pay themselves off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's not a great payback. Um, and many people think about it and say, well, I don't even know if I'm going to own this house for that length of time, you know, so I'm not really going to see that savings. You know, you'll feel some comfort um, for sure, but, but it's a tremendous amount of money to put into that. And I think that, you know, when you couple that with winter coming and the state of our economy, it, it makes sense to really take a closer look at what your options are. Um, and there are, other than price, there are a lot of reasons to not necessarily jump to a replacement window as a solution. And I think one of the stronger reasons here in New England is the beauty of an older window. Um, when you go and you put in a vinyl replacement window, you don't end up with the same product that you started out with. And I don't just mean from a draftiness or an efficiency standpoint, but from a look and an appeal. You'll lose you know, somewhere around three inches of glass in both height and width, so there's a loss of light. There's a loss of continuity for the appearance of your house and the, the appearance of these new windows. So a lot of times, people love their old window. They love the wavy glass. They love the wood. It's just not quite performing well for them anymore. So it, it's always a good idea to start with one of the simplest tips for windows. Can, can you see what this is? It's a window latch, yes. I, I would be a wealthy person if I could just have a dollar for every single unlocked window that I found in the middle of winter when I was doing assessments for the Mass Save program. Just unbelievable. And I, I went into one home, and it was so funny. This woman, she told me her windows were terrible. She was really concerned about one particular window in her living room. She called me over. You know, this window, it's so drafty. It's so cold. And I looked at it, and I could tell that it wasn't latched. So my first reaction was, well, let's, let's latch this window. And when I went to latch it, I noticed it wasn't actually grabbing anything on the back because the top sash was down about a eh, half inch, three quarters of an inch. So she just had this gap across the top of her window, letting all this cold air in from the outside. And her window wasn't even closed. Very drafty window. So I tell people as a good tip, just mark it on your calendar. Go ahead and look in advance. The end of October, it's time to lock your windows. So just go around the whole house. Make sure that both the sashes are completely closed, or if they're a crank window, that it's tightened up completely in, and get everything latched. Because the first place for, uh, for energy efficiency of a window to start is, is simply by actually locking it. Now, you'll want also to make sure that your window is, is in reasonable condition. And sometimes people say, well, you know, there's some rotten wood on my window. So I've actually got places where the air comes in because the wood's not there anymore. And this is an interesting product here. It's called, um, this particular one is called Mortite. But what it is is rope caulking. And it's caulking that's a, in a putty consistency. You can squish it into place. And you can actually pull off pieces of it 
and pop a strip in right where you need it to be. If a gap is bigger, you can put wider pieces of the rope caulking in, and you can smash it in there with your finger and close up gaps in places where the air is coming in. And come spring, it's not an ideal situation, but come spring, you can take a putty knife and you can pick it back out again. So it won't prevent you from opening your window in the future. It's not as if you have caulked it shut. So then, in addition to rope caulking, um, there is, of course, traditional caulking, which both comes in these canisters that you put into a caulking gun or into a tube that has just a screw-off cap that you can use, kind of like a big toothpaste tube with a pointy tip. But I confess that even though I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree, I am terrible at applying this product. <laughs> I, I used to be able to sculpt people out of clay, but I, I can't do caulking. Um, and it looks like a three-year-old went over there with some finger paints and just got in there and, and had a good time. So I was really excited when I went to the store recently, as excited as anyone could be about a weatherization product anyway. And I found this product, um, and it is actually caulking in a tape dispenser, essentially. So, and I haven't tried it yet, admittedly, but it, 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 the concept looks good. So you, this is reusable, and you, you actually have these spools of caulk, and there's one in here already. And so you're able to just put this nice edge right up along the side of the window where you need to apply the caulking, dispense it, and then just smooth it with your finger, and it's not as liquidous or as messy as the, um, the regular caulking. So this is a really easy way to get a nice... Um, bead of caulk into a window. And I say this because it is really important to make sure that your, your existing window has been caulked properly, that your glazing is still good. If you can take your fingers and drum them on the pane of glass of your window and you can hear it rattling, it actually needs new glazing, um, which is not the end of the world. It's, it's not that terrible of a task. Believe it or not, most windows are held in place by like four screws. Um, so there's some trim to take down, but once you do, taking the actual window out to put new glazing in is not actually as hard as some people might think. Um, so making sure your, your glass is properly glazed and your window is caulked, and then that you also go around the trim of the window, like where the trim meets up with the wall is a place for caulking to be. Where the trim boxes out your window in that corner is a place for caulking to be. Um, you don't want to caulk the window shut, obviously. I'm definitely not advising you to do that but you want to make sure that it's sealed tightly against the elements. And then another thing that's really easy to do is also applying weather stripping. And it just comes in these rolls of foam with a sticky on one side. And you get in there and apply new weather stripping to your window and get a much better seal for having done so. So these are simple things that most people can handle and it will make their window perform better than it currently does. So how many people have uh, storms on the outside of older windows? Anybody? Yes, you do. Okay. And so when you've got that situation, you also want to be checking the storm and making sure that everything seems good out there and that when you've got that window sash up that you're looking for places where like seals and things might have given way because you want a nice tight fit to that storm as well. Of course, the trick is to make sure that you always put them on at the right point in the season and you don't let it get out of... Because didn't you think you, it had gotten past you when we got 12 inches of snow? And you're like, oh, oh I meant to put those up already. <laughs> but, uh, you know, a lot of people hadn't quite gotten to them at that point. So check that storm out thoroughly as well. So if you've got, let's talk a little bit about windows. And I have, um, I have a little window here. I'm going to put it up on the table as, a, as an opportunity to point and speak about it. So... my little sample window. It's cute, don't you think? Yeah. Here we yeah. go. <laughs> okay. All right. So here we have um, here we have a window and pretend it's big. Pretend it's very big. And it's a winter day. And I decide that I'm gonna come stand by my window and admire the view out my window. Yes, this is just physics. It's nothing personal, but hot moves to cold. So you stand by that window, and you will give your body heat up to it. 
nothing we can do about that. You can add more sweaters if you want, but you know, pretty much other than that, your body heat is going to go to that window. Now, where is the warmest air in your home? In the ceiling. It's up by the ceiling, and you actively paid to heat that air, yes? Mm -hmm. That hot's going to move to cold, too. It's a shame, isn't it? That was not, a, not an exciting fact for me to learn. So the hot air that's closest to the ceiling is going to make its way over to the window as well. And you're still standing next to the window. You're admiring the view outside. And it touches the glass. I'm pretending my window is bigger. It touches the glass, and it starts to chill on contact. And as it does, the colder air falls, right? So it falls, it chills, it falls, it chills, it falls, it chills. And so finally, it reaches the window sill. And here I am still admiring the snow. But now there's no more glass to chill the air in the room. And at that point, it starts to get warmed again by the room. And it's going to breeze right past me on the way back up to the ceiling. It's called a convective loop. And it is the root cause of a large amount of the draftiness that we feel when we stand next to a window. So I would go into a house that had 10-year-old replacement windows. And they would say, you know, we got new windows, and we just, we didn't get the best, we, we, we went with the cheap model. We shouldn't have done that. And they're just junk. We're going to have to do it again. And there was really nothing wrong with their window, except for the fact that it was a window. And our windows are the weak link to our house. They will never have the insulative value of the wall that's adjacent to it. It's not going to happen. But come winter, do you like the light that you get from your window? You do. And you get a little radiant heat from the sun through some of your windows. And so we have them because we really want them. We love the light. And if you go and you build a house and you love light, you might put like extra big windows in the house because you want all that light. But then you have to deal with an extra large surface area of the weak link of your house. So knowing that that's what's going on with your window, in that if you shore up the seals on it and the weather stripping and the caulking, now you've got the convective loop to deal with, yes? So inside my sample window here, I actually, if you look at it carefully, I actually have an interior window storm in here. Did you notice? No. <laughs> Good, huh? So there's a wood frame in here, and it's been painted the same color as the trim in my house. Um, and it's got two layers of shrinkable film on it, one on each side. And then it's got a foam weather stripping tape all the way around and a couple of little pull tabs down here at the bottom so that off season I can take that out. And it looks very <coughs> polished. It looks very clean. It matches the rest of my window. And hence, people, you know, you, you're not thinking about the fact that you don't, you're, lo you're not losing your light. You're not having to put up plastic with double stick tape and get that beautiful lettucey edge around the, the perimeter of it. I also have, now this is a simpler version of the same thing. And, but this one has been put together with um, double stick tape, like you would get in one of those window kits. And this is the, the grade of plastic that you will get like at the hardware store with a window <coughs> kit. And it's got uh, foam tape around the edges. And it's, it's nice to be able to realize that you can take some, this is effective, but sort of crude looking, right? So it, you can take a, a, a step forward with the new designs that have come out. Um, we, have a, we have some local genius who's been working <coughs> with these. And this has got a spline channel that's been grooved. A groove has been put into the frame all the way around. And so putting this plastic in instead of using double stick tape is a lot like replacing a screen in your window. So you use a little hand tool. You push the spline in place. You trim off the excess. You shrink the plastic to size. But before I did that, I went ahead and painted the frame to match my window so that it would blend in nicely. And here's the science of it, though. If you have, if you have a single paned window that doesn't have a storm on it, OK, you have an R1 <coughs> for that piece of glass. If you get a basic level Energy Star window, those are an R3. You get an R1 for the first piece of glass, an R1 for the second piece of glass, and an R1 for the airspace that's in between those two pieces of glass. So 
enter the interior storm window. Now we get an R1 for the first piece of glass. We get an R1 for the airspace between that first piece of glass and the interior piece of plastic. And then we get another R for the second airspace. So, for $25, we've made something that looks nice and takes us to about the same R value as a standard replacement window. And we haven't lost the appearance of the window of our home. Now with a bigger window, you would have a support piece across the middle here that would match up with the double hung sash. Um, but other than that, you know, this is uh, just a, you know, a downscaled size-wise version of what the interior storm looks like. Now, if you have a window that's located in a part of your house <clears throat> that you don't occupy during daylight hours, do you need to be able to see through it? Not really. <laughs> so, that's an R3. This is an R20. This is probably more than your wall. It's more than my wall for sure. So this is a piece of foam. It's called poly iso isanurate. No, I cannot spell that for you. Um, and I've gone around the edge of it to seal the foam edge with some mastic tape, which is what they use to close up the seams on furnace ductwork. So it's not only does it stick really well, but it sticks even under heat. Because one thing that does happen when you pop something in your window is there can be solar gains. And so it can get pretty hot in there. And then I went all the way around the outside edge of this with some foam weather stripping tape. And it essentially, obviously I don't have a window that's this shape. I was working with a scrap because I didn't want to waste any. Um, but essentially this is this for a window that you don't get any daylight out of anyway. So you might as well go ahead and put something you can't see through in that space. You'll get a much higher R value out of it. Um, this is a good option for basement windows um, especially and you'll want to still go in there with your caulking and everything and I want to be clear I am not telling you to caulk your basement window shut. That is not safe. Okay? But to make sure you're sealed around the edges because a lot of times people have like field stone or brick or whatever and the mortar butts right up to the window and you want to make sure that that's nice and sealed. But then once that's all closed up, you can cut a piece of foam to pop in there and then you've got a really nice level of insulation for that space. Now in addition to the interior storms, there's also a product called window quilts. Um, there's a like a, an, a, a name from one of the local companies I think is, is called Warm Windows or Warm and Toasty Windows. And basically, um, window quilts have the, a similar idea in that you're trying to insulate the inside of that window area. And that way you can do something that is more, you know, decorative, if you will. So this is very clean and simple. And my husband, who spent, you know, almost a year putting up all the trim in our house, prefers being able to see all the trim work that he did and he likes this interior flush mount that you get out of the interior storm. But if you want something that is more drapery like, more curtain like, you could look to a window quilt as another option. And um, we are planning on having window quilt workshops as well, a little further into the season. And those feature a piece of quilt batting that actually has a couple of additional layers in there and one of them helps to reflect some of the uh, radiant heat and the other one is giving you an additional barrier to, um, to that heat transfer. And then you've got uh, just like an, either a cream or a white fabric on one side, which would face the outside of your house. And then you choose the drapery fabric that you want to put on the front. The key with the window quilts, and this is very important, you must make sure you get a tight seal. It has to do with surface magnets that you attach the quilt to the window frame, to the trim of the window. If you don't get a tight seal with your window quilt, moisture will get back behind there and you'll get um, like mildew growth in the, um, in the sashes of your window and on the back of your curtain. And yes, I have window quilts and yes, I definitely have some mold growing on my windowsill sometimes. So I've seen the effect of this firsthand. Um, Theoretically, if, if you've sealed your window up properly and you have a good seal with this gasket here, that helps to prevent moisture transfer over to the surface of the glass because how many of you have condensation that forms on your windows in the winter? Yes? 
And if you've got steam heat, that usually kicks it up another notch still. And if you cook a lot, that'll take it up another notch further. So being able to prevent that condensation from being there is, um, well, pretty helpful. Um, so the thing that you're getting from this is a lot of comfort, right? Because now you don't have that breezy convective loop at your window anymore. You're also getting the savings on your utility bill. And then you're, getting, you're still getting to have your light that you so enjoy. Um, I met a family, a husband and wife, who did these for their whole house and saw a tremendous reduction. They were burning wood. Tremendous reduction, like in excess of a cord of wood that they dropped down what they were burning um, every winter. But the thing that she was so excited about was the comfort. She said, it's unbelievable how much more comfortable it is because this surface temperature of this piece of plastic was nothing compared to the surface temperature of that piece of cold glass. So um, when I was doing assessments, I went to this lovely house in Montague. Very sweet woman. Um, she was living there by herself and very big house. So she had closed off a lot of it so that she wasn't actively heating as much of the house. And it was literally, when I say very big, I mean really big. Two, two houses stuck together, actually. There was one, and then they brought another one, and they stuck that to it. Uh, I think it had ten bedrooms and five baths or something along those lines. And um, so a window salesman got a hold of her, you know, before I had had a chance to visit with my mass save assessment. She had replaced all of her windows, and she went from burning 1,600 gallons of oil a winter. That's a lot of oil, too. Are you ready for the savings? 1,500 gallons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Would that please you? No, she wasn't too pleased with that either. That result was not exactly the 30% savings that this window salesman had promised her. And, it, you know, they say this a lot. They say, we can save you up to 30% on your heating costs. And really, the up to is very important because there aren't that many houses that are in such shape that they're going to make that drastic of an improvement by changing out the windows. Um, and I'm not saying it never happens, but it's far more typical to have that 35 to 99 year payback on the windows. Now she said, now don't get me wrong, it is much more comfortable than it used to be. But I am not seeing that oil savings that he promised me. So yeah, it, it, so you look at it and you say, okay, I could buy, you know, for a three by five window, which is sort of a standard size window, I can spend $300, and that typically is not the installed price. That's to go buy the window. I can spend $300, or I could spend $25. So it's kind of hard to not want to know a little bit more about that, isn't it? <laughs> so the other thing that I definitely wanted to point out, too, is that there are additional factors that are going on inside the house to help the cold from that window make you even colder. Um, and this is a wonderful diagram that is really helpful in talking about this issue. So in New England, most folks have a basement. Yes, you have basements in your homes. So down in your basement, if this is a cross section of a, a just a, a simple ranch, down in the basement you've got a heat source, either a boiler or a furnace in most homes. And then that boiler or furnace has ductwork or piping that runs off of it to carry that warmth through the house. And most people do not have finished basements. For most folks, it's a place where they do their laundry and they store all the stuff that they've been meaning to get rid of for a little while, but they haven't done it yet. And so down here in the basement, they're not actively trying to heat it. There's no radiator down there. There's no heat register down there. There's no coil. Maybe if someone's got a workshop, they might have run a little tiny piece off to one side. But what they've got going on is some accidental heating of the air that is immediately around the heating system. And that air, what does warm air do? It rises. That's right. So that warm air is going to look for any way that it can to rise in this house. And when it does, it finds all the holes that have been cut in the ceiling of the basement to run your plumbing, your heating, your electrical, your telephone, your cable up into the house. And those services, they all run through your wall cavities, don't they? So that cold air that was in your basement, 
it, it's still pretty cold. It's just warmer than the rest of the air in your basement, and so it rose up into your wall cavities. And you might think, well, that's really not that big of a deal. I've got some air. It's inside my wall. It's cooler than my house, but not that big of a deal. But now it's on the other side of the wallboard in the room that you're actively paying to heat. Yes? So you're, you're heating that room, and you're having that, that wallboard is now conducting the heat in that room to that colder air because hot moves to cold that's inside that wall cavity. And so that air gets warmer still until it has another opportunity to rise. If you've got a second floor, it'll rise to the second floor <coughs> until eventually it leaves out of any crack or crevice that it can find in the attic floor. And again, you might think, well, okay, so there's a little air, it's in my basement, it's getting warmer, it's rising up through my wall cavities, it's leaving my house. I'm not really feeling the effect of that. But in fact, you are. Because your whole house has now become a vacuum, and it is actively sucking cold air in from the outside to replace the hot air that's leaving. Yes. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> that facial expression was perfect. That's exactly right. Not good. This is called the stack effect or the chimney effect, and it has an incredible impact. If you think you've got bad windows, well, now your windows have this vacuum actually pulling even more cold air in, right? Because you've got vacuum pressure of this warmed air that's leaving. So there's a solution to this problem, and it is called air sealing. And a lot of people know what insulation is, right? You know what fiberglass insulation is. You've heard of cellulose insulation. A lot of people have heard of insulation because just like windows, there's lots of really good insulation salesmen out there. But we do have one problem, and that is that they don't talk about air sealing, and a lot of them don't do it either. So this is my little Rorschach test here. Uh, this is expandable spray foam. I personally think it looks like a poodle if you hold it just like this. Here's the tail, and here's the head. And this is expandable spray foam. It is uh, fire rated, which is why it's bright orange, but we use it in places that you don't see, okay? So when air sealers begin to work on a home, they want first to go up into the attic and look for all the places where that air is leaving and seal those up. It's kind of like putting a cap on the situation, right? And then they want to go down into the basement and look for all the chases and openings that that warm air is rising out of. Anybody got a bathtub on the first floor of their house? Is that tub nice and warm when you step into it? Because it's full of water. But if you take a shower in there, is that a cold tub by any chance? Most of the time. Yeah. Usually if you go down in the basement, you can actually see a cutout yeah. where the bathtub is and where the plumbing comes in. And, and people will stuff... Uh, pink insulation into the opening and they think that that's going to solve the problem but insulation is not a barrier to air movement so that quote unquote warm air is not as warm as the room that that bathtub is in yet it's rising up inside that cavity underneath the bathtub chilling it for you ahead of time so air sealing can help to take care of of this issue and therefore help your windows perform even better than they currently do <clears throat> now, good news um, in that in Massachusetts we have a, a state program that I mentioned earlier, the Mass Save program, and you can actually get a no cost home energy assessment where a home energy specialist, which is what I used to do, would come out to your home. They'll take a look at everything from the basement all the way up to the attic, assess how much insulation you have what they think your level of air infiltration is, like how much is your house breathing right now, and whether or not there might be room for improvement that falls within the, ma the Mass Save guidelines, and um, what they offer for houses that need to have draftiness taken care of is eight hour, up to eight hours of air sealing at no cost, and uh, insulation that's covered at 75%. So you only pay 25% of the cost of the insulation that you're going to add to your home through this program. Um, and the, the home energy specialist will actually write the contracts out for you right then, and you'll know exactly how much money it is. They call it a rebate, which is kind of funny because you never pay it and wait to get it back. You only pay the 25%. Um, there is a $2,000 cap to what the Mass Save will contribute for your insulation. So if you go past the $2,000, then you would owe 100% of the balance beyond that. 
but there's kind of a sweet spot in there <clears throat> where you put in $600 and you get to $2,600 worth of insulation. So it's a pretty stellar program. Um, and because they will help you deal with the air issues in the house in general, it's a really good place to start if you're also concerned about your windows. And you can ask a very knowledgeable person, so how are my windows, you know? And it's true, you know, single pane is not as good as double pane, but if you like your windows in general and you don't want to see your bank account drop down by twenty to thirty thousand dollars and you're willing to, to put in a little effort to do some interior storms, this is a really good option to take care of making those windows better. So I was wondering if anyone had questions that they wanted to ask regarding this process? Yes. Well, not so much the process, but where would you get in touch with the agency that you just mentioned? Oh, the Mass Save program. Um, you can get in touch with them. Um, probably the most easy thing to do is to go to their website, Mass which Save. is masssave.com. Mm -hmm. And um, they have tabs for home and for business. And there's just a global phone number on there that you can call into, and they will um, schedule you for an assessment. The, um, the provider for the assessment is aligned with how you heat your home. So if you are a natural gas customer and you have Columbia Gas, it would be a Columbia Gas Mass Save audit. And if you were an electric customer, it would be a National Grid or a uh, Wamico audit. Or if you had oil or propane, it actually reverts back to the electric company again because those companies are too small to administer the program. Um, but it's, it is a wonderful place to start. And no, it isn't the end all be all. There's, there are definitely bigger measures and bigger steps that you can take beyond what MassSave has to offer. But it's an excellent place to start because <coughs> a lot of folks, you know, they think their house is drafty. It's, it's actually hyperventilating, you know, and it's letting off all of their heat all winter long. And in the summer, unfortunately, the stack effect works in reverse to help bring the heat of your attic, like, down into your house for you to enjoy, um, which I personally don't enjoy at all. We have no tree shade in our yard whatsoever. So we were pretty happy with the result, both from a heating and a cooling perspective, when we actually got the right amount of insulation and air sealing into our attic. We had the Mass Safe program as <coughs> Did well. Did you? Yes, good. Very, very helpful. Good, good. Yeah, it's, it's one of those, it's kind of like a best kept secret. There are people who, you know, they know about it, but they haven't done it yet, or they don't know about it, or they did it 20 years ago. And the program actually changes and grows and expands over time. And the things that they're willing to do for the houses has grown and expanded. And in doing so, you know, if you haven't done it in a long time, quite frankly, it's probably time to do it again because there, there are more things available than used to be. Um, and then there's also, a lot of people don't know this either, if you need to replace your heating system or your hot water system, get an assessment because you have access to very nice rebates on uh, high efficiency heating systems and high efficiency water heating systems and access to a 0% interest loan to help you pay for it. So you can get a loan for a term of seven years with no interest on it to put in a high efficiency heating system or a hot water heating system. Or if you were to have a lot of things that needed to happen in your home, say your house doesn't have wall insulation, maybe you have like one layer of insulation in the attic but you don't have walls. Walls can get expensive because you can have so much volume of insulation that you need. You might go past that $2,000 cap, but you can use the heat loan to help you with that and space it out. And a lot of people say, oh, you know, I really don't want a loan. Um, but in many cases, you look at what they're saving through the extra insulation or what they're saving through updating their heating system. And what you find is that the amount of money that they're spending every month almost pales in comparison to the savings that they're making in oil. Uh, or it might be the equivalent on a monthly basis of, say, going out to dinner once. You know, and I look at somebody and I say, okay, so once you take off how much extra oil you're not going to be burning anymore, it's going to probably cost you about $40. What's that, a burrito di dinner for your family? So you want to have a one less burrito dinner and have a better heating system and a warmer, more comfortable home. And when you look at it that way, or you can equate it to cups of coffee. There are a lot of people who really love their Dunkin' Donuts coffee. But when you, when you break it out and you look at just how little it is, 
it's like, okay, this, this might actually be, there are good reasons to look at financing, and this, this may very well be one of them for a lot of people. So. Another question. Um, you talked about each window being a candidate for the interior window. I have windows that have these cavities on the side with the weights that go yes. up and down. Yes. How do you deal with that, or is that a problem? The, what kind of energy am I losing through those cavities? Um, those, those cavities are definitely a loss. There's no doubt about that. Um, what you do want to look at is whether or not you have enough depth in the wood here to get something in there, tension mounted inside that area. And sometimes people don't have that cavity and they have to look to a surface mount. And the surface mount would differ in that the foam weather stripping would actually go on the back side of the frame and you would use tension clips to hold it to the front face of the window so it would actually be like outside the frame of the window. Um, and there, there are companies that manufacture these that don't use a, ten, uh, um, a tension mount. They use a surface mount with these tension clips. Um, so it's far more common if you were to buy this product ready-made for you to find that surface mount with tension clips. Um, a lot of people also, they think about this plastic and they think, oh, but, you know, here's a company and they're selling a, an acrylic. You know, I can get a sheet of plexiglass instead, and that's a better product. That's more durable. That piece of plexiglass only gives you one trapped airspace. It does not provide you the same level of savings that these two pieces of plastic do. Um, and they are also very heavy, the ones that have plexiglass in them. And um, the cost of plexiglass is a petroleum product, and I'm not saying that this isn't, but the cost of plexiglass has gotten very high um, just in the past few years because, well, we wanted to build a greenhouse, and so we started looking into it. It's like, oh, wait, that might not offset the cost of the vegetables that we could actually grow in that <laughs> space. So it, plexiglass is, is a quite costly, um, and glass is an excellent conductor of heat. So if you put a glass interior storm in, it, it's just not not really doing the trick. You Again, you've only got one airspace, and it's the surface of that glass is colder than the surface of this piece of plastic film would be. Thanks. Yeah. Are there other questions? No? So for part two of alternatives to replacement windows, we'll actually be making interior storms. The idea behind it is that you'll want to measure an actual window in your house and that when you leave the workshop, you'll have a window, that you, a, a window insert that you can make use of. Yeah, instead of just making a little sample tiny window that you can't actually do anything with. All right, so I'm going to turn this around and pull, pull this out so I can demonstrate the measuring process and show you exactly how that works. And this is very, very tight, so I hope it doesn't give me too much issue here. Yeah, here it comes. Good. The first time I did this, I actually had um, the paint was too fresh and the window insert actually stuck and it wouldn't let go. I'm like, ah! And I just struggled and struggled with it, but so you can see how nice that works. So in order to measure properly, you're going to look at a few different things and make sure it's a candidate, your, that your window is a good candidate. <coughs> so if you have a sash piece for opening, the, um, of course, for opening and closing the window, you want to make sure that this pro doesn't protrude too far into the cavity so that you won't be able to make the, uh, the you won't have a spot remaining for the window insert. <coughs> so you want to make sure that you have at least three quarters of an inch of depth right here because that's how thick your frame is. And the trick with measuring for a window is that it can be problematic in getting a really ex precise measurement because you're trying to measure this space inside here. So if you go like this, you're measuring at an angle, right, to get that number. But if you go like this, you're measuring on a curve. 
and you're doing your very best to make sure that you measure to the same part of that curve every time and it, it's it's not quite exact so a better plan these are three by three post-it notes so if you take a post-it note and you take that sticky edge and you put that right in there right now you get in here you measure to the edge of the post-it record that number and then just add three inches and you've definitely got it right yeah because you're right up in that corner because that tension and that foam, you want the foam, the foam's supposed to give just a little and then completely fill up that extra space in there. So you really want to get that nice, accurate measurement. And so what I did for my own window is I went ahead and put one here and one here and one here and one here. And you want to take all four measurements, especially in an older house, because the possibility that they are not the same gets exponentially greater. My house was built in 1870 quirky you know the ceiling you look at it the trim like the height above the trim on one side of the room is this much and as you get to the middle of the house it's like this and then it goes back up again as you go to the edge so you want to measure all four of these measurements and when you submit them um, for the workshop you would give me all four measurements top bottom left right and if you've used a three inch post-it note which i highly recommend <laughs> Um, you want to make sure that you've already added that three inches, but that gives you a really concrete measurement. Now, when I get that on my end, I'm going to subtract. I'm going to take an average of the two if they're slightly different, and then I'm going to subtract three quarters of an inch. And that allows for a little bit of compression of this foam so that you get a nice, tight, secure fit for your window all the way around and they're not necessarily super easy to put in or super easy to take out but you get a really nice seal and I have a little trick when I put them in too I actually take um, two pieces of folded um, wax paper and I'll start with two edges and then I'll, I'll, I'll push and scoot and then just scoot the last two in and then I just shimmy the two pieces of wax paper out and then I, I know that I've gotten it right in where I want it and I haven't caused like a wrinkle or a fold to the foam or anything like that so I've got my full depth and thickness um, but you'll send your measurements to me with left right top bottom I'll make the adjustments to allow for the foam tape and then we've got a wood shop that's agreed to cut the wood two sides with the routed channels and the mitered corners on it so that when you come to the workshop you'll actually assemble one of these and you'll take it home and pop it in and say ah that is more comfortable and you can make the decision at that point that you know this is a project that I'd like to chip away at myself and you could order more kits or you could decide that you would really rather us you know point you to a resource for where you might be able to purchase them where someone else makes them for you but we like to get everybody started with the idea that it is quite possible to do these on your own. Any questions about the measurement? Clever. Yes, definitely. And I mean, there's, there's, there's little, you know, the tape measure also does the three inch thing, but the thing is, what if your tape measure doesn't fit as politely into the corner of your trim? This is a, a flat three inches. Ooh, look at that. What an awesome opportunity for me to show you something. So this is one of the beautiful things about this new system, actually. And it would be really great if I had an ink pen, but I don't. So instead, here we go. I just pulled this up with my thumbnail. You can pull out the spline. You would go all the way around and pull out all four pieces of the spline. And then you actually remove this plastic, and you can restring it. You can restring it as many times as you need to. Over the years, you've got a nice durable frame. Maybe you need to put new foam tape on every now and then. Maybe you need to put a piece of new plastic up because you stuck your caulking through it like I just did. That was brilliant. But the fact of the matter is you can fix it. And I love this. When you tear that lettuce-edged plastic that you installed, you know, to, to seal up your window for winter, that's trash. And you get to start over from square one, putting up more double stick tape and a new piece of plastic. But these are very easy to repair. 
And because I take this and, and show it, you know, and sometimes I throw it on the back seat of my car, needless to say, I have restrung this with plastic several times now. But it's not hard to do. All right. So there's another router um, edge on the other side, there is. is that right? They're routed on both sides. So there's another. This, this one doesn't have a little piece standing up for me to grab with my fingernail. You can get the, you can get it out really easily with an awl or a screwdriver to get the piece, but I don't actually have any tools up here with me or I'd pop that one out as well. So. Oh well, that mishap I guess worked to an advantage. But you, if you've gotten any of this window plastic before at home, you can feel this is much thicker than the stuff that they sell oh, at the yeah. hardware store. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And more optically clear, too. It's actually a framing supply that they use for shrink wrapping artwork. So is the it? sturdiness and the clarity of it is, is superior. It's a 100 gauge plastic, <coughs> so it's quite nice. Do you have to use the hair dryer on it? Like you do. You, you do use the hair dryer on it, yep. And um, so basically, if you can use a, a paintbrush, a screwdriver, a hair dryer, and a carton knife, because you do have to trim the excess plastic, and a, and a little hand staple gun, you can make one of these. Good news, huh? Yeah. Very good. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you everyone coming out. I want, oh, I'm another sorry, question. Sure. Question. How do you put the uh, mitered sides together? I don't see any, any. Um, right, there's uh, wood glue and screws oh. for the mitered sides. So it just goes right through the side. Goes right through the side. Uh -huh. Yep. Hmm. Wood glue and screws. So if you make one of these, then you can take it home and and take the plastic out and and then paint it. Or if, if you let me know when you give me your measurements that you'd like to paint it and you give me your measurements quickly enough, I'll try to actually make arrangements for you to get your frame ahead of time so you can paint it. So I can it. paint it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that would be wonderful. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or if you've got wood trim, I recommend people get a stain that matches. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And uh, the first time I ever saw any of these installed, I was in somebody's home doing an assessment, and I was noticing how she had just the right trim to do it and I said oh you know you have a perfect window casement trim to to do uh, interior storm windows and she said you mean like the one you're sitting next to oh, and okay. I didn't notice because she had Williamsburg blue trim and mullions and window sashes and so the the frame was painted Williamsburg blue just like the rest of it and it just blended right in I had no idea that it was there so that was what gave me the idea oh it doesn't have to look quite like this you know you could yeah. do something that's more fitting with the visual style of your home. And um, when I showed this to my husband, he said, no. <laughs> <laughs> when I showed him this one, he's like, oh, okay, we can do that. Because <laughs> he's been a year putting that trim up around those windows. He didn't want to go with something that was unattractive. So it's understandable. Could it's I ask work. another question? Mm -hmm. This is three quarters of an inch thick. It is. So that means that the airspace in there is three quarters of an inch. It is. Is is that the right? Is there a better or a less good distance for the two? <coughs> three quarters of an inch is very nice. Yeah. Um, half an inch, I think, is kind of a bare minimum. Mm -hmm. um, and the there's a kind of a law of diminishing returns. Mm -hmm. So the likelihood that people might not have enough room to go deeper mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily, you know, co and, and, the f and that fact alone doesn't necessarily correlate with, but I, an, an inch as opposed to a half an inch, you know, there, there probably would be some help there, but I don't think you would get as much. Okay. That, that R1 that you get from that first airspace is, right. you know, right. if you've got 40 inches of insulation in your attic, the last three didn't add as much impact as the first three did. Mm -hmm. So again, the total amount of insulation provided by this mm -hmm. is how much? It adds an R2 to your window. It adds an R2. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Yeah. All right, so I'm Laura Biddle for the Center for Ecotechnology. I appreciate your time and your attention, and hopefully you'll be inspired and you'll want to make interior window storms for your own windows and increase your home's efficiency and your comfort and lower your energy bills.